The last pale stripes of light were fading quickly behind the city's expanse that evening. The street still damp from a recent rain, glimmering thinly. The street lights had not yet flickered to life. I was on my way home from what had been a difficult job, leaving me exhausted and grim. I took long steps, my hands balled into fists, shoved deep into my pockets. It was chilly, not a biting cold, but a murmuring one. A cold that sent its pallid hands lightly creeping along your skin. Whispers of touch that raised goose pimples, hair, and suspicion. I felt my heart rate quicken, my breathing become labored. I paused, eyes fluttered shut, and I heard the muted crunch of a single footstep behind me. Then, nothing. There was someone following me. There was someone following me. I set off at a dead run, all springs and gears turning. And now, there was no mistaking it. It was almost certain that there was a pursuer. It didn't, I didn't look back, I only ran. My feet slapped pavement hard, jarring. We ran together. My pursuer and I, a maniac. High stakes dance. Through side streets, back alleys, and over garbage cans. Finally, we reached my street. I jumped one hand over the fence, through the, a backyard, and ran to my front stoop. I reached my front door, a mad scramble for my keys. I knew if I could only make it to the basement before I was caught, I would be home free. I ran to the basement door, shoved it open, then I tore it down the stairs, jumping down the last two steps before hiding in the shadows. The pursuer slowed as he crept down the steps of my basement, each foot falling descending him further into the murky gloom. A weak ray of light shining down the basement stairs allowed me to see my pursuer's hand brushing and feeling his way along the cold basement wall, searching for a light switch. I heard his every breath I get heavy and wet. As his hand met with the light switch, he quickly flicked it on. I watched as the man in the blue uniform stood frozen in terror as his gaze swept over the room. From the blood-stained walls to the gory freezer in the corner to what was left of my previous dinner on the surgical table. He didn't hear me creep up behind him, but he must have felt the throbbing bulge in my pants as I emptied a full syringe into the flesh of his neck. Well, officer, I whispered in the policeman's ear as his body went up. Looks like you solved this case. A man, a man, a grin crept across my lips.